members. Thanks for watching this introductory video. We're going to go into just a little bit more detail now and cover some other topics. Okay, the first other topic I want to cover is documentation. I have a shortcut for the SonarWiz, SonarWiz 6 program files folder which you get installed when you install your software. The documents folder has some really helpful information. The first one I'm going to look at, it's mostly a PDF documentation, is the user guide. Uh, if you open the user guide and click on it, and you have a question, we're going to open that user guide, and I'm going to type in a control F. I think it has to open more fully before I can do that. So, maybe I have to say open, or we will <laughs> we'll open the user guide a different way. I'm going to try opening it this different way. If you're within SonarWiz in the GUI, you can click on help and user manual, and there we go. All right, that's an even easier way. So I'm going to click a, a control F, open a find, and try to review what we just did and see if we can find information about creating a project. Okay. And I'll click on Next and Sona was is searching for Create Project. And there we go. Alright, this is the first piece of information I wanted to share with you, which is if you have created a project and you have anything you want to change about it, there's a way to get back. We're going to go up to the wrench icon where it says Project Settings. And we've opened up the same dialog and we can change things. So if you set up your project and come back and want to change it, there's an important section in the user guide we're going to like next. We'll look at, and it's called uh, workflow. So it's a good idea to keep your projects going in a certain sequence. And if I can find a way to get back to workflow, I think I'll try to go to project one, and I'll use Control F, and I'll look for workflow. Section 1.6.2 has some really good stuff on workflow. And I want to review this with you because create or open existing projects is uh, a sequence number two here when we're doing the workflow. Loading base maps, importing data, these are later in the project. And if you have adjustments to make on the project, it's good to do them before you load the base maps and before you import data, and before you get deep into trimming and bottom tracking and other things in the project. You have a tiny bit of recourse if you have opened a project, created it, and imported data. Sometimes you can go back and change the setting, like the coordinate system, and it'll allow you an option of reprojecting your data. Personally, I don't usually want to do that. I'd like to go sequentially right through the project the way that the workflow suggests and not try to go back and depend on a repair of a previous step like changing the project settings and create project after I've already imported data. You can try it but it's not a workflow sequence that is as uh, typically used and I think the more frequently used workflow sequences work better and they get more attention and they are more reliable in SonarWiz. So I just want to give you that background tip. Okay, so let's go back again to SonarWiz and look at what would happen if we wanted to configure an existing project. Let's say you made a mistake that you were on number like that. Let's see if we would say OK and go back again. Okay, so it's still in UTM 10, but we changed the latitude and longitude. 
All right, another piece of information I wanted to share is when you're getting help, after you created your project, it didn't work right, click on Help in My Support Info. This will tell you your license key number, the version of SonarWiz you're using, and these are very important for us to know. You can click the email option if you have your email client connected, and it will set up an email to us. Here you go. It goes support at chesapeaketech.com. It sends us a uh, automatically attached version of your MML file. The last 100,000 lines or so of your log file it tells us your Sonowiz key license number and your uh, version number. So this is very easy to do, and it's a very helpful way for us to get an email from you saying, my project opened in, Alger in uh, Algeria, and I wanted it to be in Sweden. What went wrong? When we see your MML file, uh, we see a lot of things, and uh, it's it's just great to uh, get all of that information for us to think about when we're trying to help you. Okay, I want to get off of here and go to the SonarWiz website. I went to uh, chestechsupport.com. I've already logged in, but you can log out and log back in. You get a, a login to this website when you uh, receive an EMA letter when you purchase a license key. And you can log in anytime. And I just want to review some of the basic things you do when you've set up your first project. If you have any questions about videos, the tutorials link is a great place to find all of our videos. Many of them are also on YouTube, but you can go through here and find documents as well as videos. The first one I want to show you is uploading files to CTI. If you've done a good job of consolidating your project information into the project, it'll be easy to send us. You put a zip file together with your project and click on this, uploading files and it gives you a URL and this is our Hightail link. It's a Dropbox system where you click and it opens up a web page screen dialog where you can drag and drop your files and we also send a, an optional zip file if you don't have a zip file. And you can send this to us. So this is a great way for us to communicate with you and see your data for very large files. A small file like the MML file you can send by an email attachment. But if you're sending a couple of lines of sonar data, you know, 35 megabytes each, you want to send it through the support site like that. It helps just to get information about what's going wrong for you first in an email. And then we will send you a project uh, a problem number like PL. 6435 and you send that as a code in your files when you send them through Hightail and we can tag your code uh, to your files and associate with your problem report. It's very easy for us to keep track that way. Now let me open up another uh, folder here. We've got us, we showed this short SonarWiz shortcut where inside your SonarWiz uh, area you've got a documents folder and this is the program files Chesapeake Technology Sona with 6. In addition to the user guide there are many other help documents. These are available on the support site but they're also available here for you on your your desktop if you want. You don't have to have Sona was running or a license key to access these. Uh, like if you did an evaluation code you'll have access to these documents forever and you can open them with the Adobe Reader. Let's see, the one that I wanted to show you, I think there was another one. I wanted to show you one more thing. Yeah, let's take a look at your project and see if I've got a project folder. Okay, so in my uh, SonarWiz projects folder, the one we just created was demo XTF1. And uh, I want to open that up and show you what happens when we create a project. So you've got a top level project folder this is the folder that we would want you to copy and put into a zip file and send us because it encapsulates all the other folders of your project. Inside that folder, 
you've got a 3D view area. This is when you export uh, side scan and sub bottom or bathymetry data in 3D views. You get the file support there. The backup folder has uh, a copy of your MML file, your core files, and your feature data. So a little bit of your data is backed up every time you open up SonarWiz as a way to safety precaution uh, and prevent you from losing every bit of information if something goes wrong. In the Bathy folder, you'll have data lines and grids for a bathymetry license. You might have imported some data. That's where it would go. Classify is, uh, so at this point, side scan only, and it's a seabed classification uh, feature set in the side scan post-processing. And your data would go here. CSF is uh, the main folder for compact sonar files for side scan and sub bottom data. And if you had a project of, of that type and you import a file, it will create files inside there. Now you can see how if you have uh, opened your files and, for example, put them the source sonar files in the XTF folder, it's really convenient to send us both your source sonar data as well as your CSF files in the entire project just by zipping this whole thing. I'll tell you, many users don't put their XTF files in here. <laughs> they put their sonar data nested three or four levels deep off on some uh, obscure uh, network drive reference. And when they send in a project, they might have to package their sonar data separately. Going down further, uh, I want to show you, here we have the uh, demo XTF 215. This is the MML file. And if we show uh, the file extensions, it'll be easier to see. And we'll do that maybe in the next video. But this is the file, and we'll open it with uh, Notepad. I'll see if I can do this. If I can find a Notepad option. There we go. Inside your MML file, it tells us some really cool things. One is the version of software that you've been running in this project. The other is the uh, CTI serial number. This one was running on an evaluation code, so we don't have a, a license key. It tells us your uh, project coordinate system under output coordinates. This is the way you're presenting your data in SonarWiz. It also shows us the input uh, coordinate system code. You can have these be different. They can be completely different. Internally, SonarWiz uses WGS84 for its coordinates. So whatever you say for an import, it will transform from that into WGS84. And then a, an output transport uh, transform to show you in your uh, project coordinate system. So it's usually three coordinate systems that work in SonarWiz. I'm going to look up a special thing here, see if I can find, uh, let's see what it is, 300. And down deep inside the file, you can see how the project has been encoded so that programmers know what they're talking about. They call it the RTM working set. And you and I know that was the time constant for course smoothing. So there's a little bit of a disconnect here between what you do and the numbers that go into your MML file and what the developers, how they've encoded it. This is not something we recommend often that you uh, review your MML file, but just in case there are a few uh, QA steps you can do and it's described in the frequently asked questions for SonarWiz 5 where you actually would go through with Notepad and look at your uh, MML file and see if it has any problems. There are steps you can do. If you have collected sub-bottom data, SBP is the folder where we recommend you start putting your data. If you record data with SonarWiz, those are the folders in which it would go. Sub-bottom would go into SBP, or uh, bathymetry, or side scan data would go into XTF. If you do contact capture, then the targets folder would go in there. You, you get images of each contact that you've captured and you'll have a small JPEG file, uh, two, two files of the uh, raw image and the adjusted image for contacts. So those are the main folders. Uh, one more that I'll mention is GeoTIFF. If we're doing export of your data, I mean, you take a image export 
sort of a screenshot exporting your data of uh, the sonar was will capture your data out and it'll send it out to the GeoTIFF folder by default. You can change that, but we do recommend keeping it within the folder. So if you send it in, we'll see what what you've got for a, an issue. I want to mention that MAG is a magnetometry data folder that by default would be where we store magnetometry data. If you have any uh, real-time acquisition feature and you've created a project and you record MAG data, it will go into this folder. So those are the main folders. Um, it's just a great system for the developers to be able to use that and know the predefined names. You could in many cases store your data in different ways different places but it's, it's very convenient for getting support to use the existing project structure we recommend that you don't rename a project after it's been created and after you've collected data into it just keep it all the same so that SonarWiz doesn't lose track I think that's probably all we want to do here for this particular project and I really want to thank you for watching our video and hope you have a good experience creating your very first project in SonarWiz.